Here I have two objects that are at the same size. This one is brass, this one's aluminum. Uh, the weight of this one is more than twice the weight of this one. There seems to be a mixed opinion about what happens if I drop them at the same time. Just do it. Just a quick demonstration. Let's see. Make sure I drop them at the same time. There we go. same time. Did anyone believe that there was trickery involved? See, I wonder, because the belief that the heavier one would fall faster and hit the ground sooner was in play for a couple of thousand years. I always wonder about did any student ever go, hey, but what about this? Here's two rocks and they weigh differently and I dropped them at the same time, they hit at the same time. I just wonder how that got explained. But I don't know. All right, I will need three volunteers and we're gonna head out to the hallway. It's a moment. Was this just part of a con on Robert's part when he said, oh, I'll just pretend to be the weakest, or I'll just be the weakest. Let's see if next time maybe we'll do it for money. Why was Robert able to push it down to the ground? Because of where the force was exerted. Meaning? Uh, because he pushed it in the middle and not towards the ends. Okay, so why is in the middle easier than in the ends. The least point of tension. Uh, actually, the, the tension throughout the rope, it would, it's gonna be relatively constant. Yes, bro. Um, there's a direct force on one side and a direct force on the other. And they're both equally exerting pressure on the Most of the effort that Ethan and Luis were spending were against each other. Because they were mostly pulling this way. They were not opposing, as Brewer said, if they had been pulling upward more, they could have stopped it. So if he had pushed closer, you would have gotten more of an angle there, so more of that force would have been upward. But in essence, we have this force going this way. and a force going that way, and then all it needs to do is combat the two that are, combat just this part of the force acting upwards, not to scale. Because again, most of the effort here is this way and that way, and they're not opposing Robert at all. So most of that is just wasted effort. Years ago, I was, it had iced over, I was living in Charlotte, uh, it had iced over, it needed to get a car out, the, the driveway sort of went up and then down, and I need, if I could just get it to the top. So what I do, my car was stuck down here, I found a tree, actually the tree was off at the angle like that, I tied a cord to it, a lot of tension in the cord, and I knew that some of this was wasted effort because some of this tension here was acting off to the side, no wonder to go straight, but there was enough going straight that all I have to do is creep it forward just a little bit and then tighten it up again, then just a little bit more, tighten it up again, just so long as some of the force was in the direction I actually wanted to go, I actually could, I was able to get the car out after a half hour. <sighs> all right, so what's the moral of the lesson? direction matters. So there are some quantities where direction matters and some quantities where it doesn't. So if you already know the answer, but I'll throw it out anyway. If direction matters, what kind of quantities are we talking about? What's the magic word? 
Wow. Thought somebody would know. Did you say you mount the word force? Uh, that is a specific type of this word I'm looking for. So if we're talking about magnitude, if the magnitude of the quantity, so how, if you're talking about a force specifically, if you're, if you're pulling on something, how hard you pull matters. But direction also matters, so magnitude and direction matters. If I'm trying to close the door, it definitely matters the direction I'm pushing. We're dealing with vectors. Vectors. That's the word. Vector. We will be dealing with vectors a great deal in this course and in the sequel. If only the magnitude matters, such as the number of people in this room, there's really no direction associated with it. It's just there's 15 people in the room right now, unless someone else snuck in. So if it's only magnitude, what's the magic word? What are those called? This is the kind of stuff that you've been dealing with since kindergarten, actually probably before kindergarten. So don't make Ethan do it. There's vector math and there's scalar math. <clears throat> we'll be doing both. All right, so what's the difference in the math? Well, because direction matters. If I walk one kilometer east and then one kilometer west, I got two different quantities I can describe here. I can talk about how far did I walk. Two kilometers. Two kilometers. All right. So the distance I travel is two kilometers. Direction didn't matter whether it's going east or west. This is a scalar. And If I take direction into account, and the question is not how far did I walk, but where am I relative to where I started? Where am I relative to where I started? So how far have I gone? So in that case, my displacement is zero kilometers. Now, officially, because I have a vector on the left-hand side of the equation, I should have a vector on the right-hand side of the equation. But at zero, it's a vector. The magnitude is zero, and the direction is, it doesn't matter. So it's what's called a zero vector. Now, the symbol I have over top is what indicates that we're talking about a vector. There are also certain key words that are automatically vectors. So this is distance. That is a scalar. Over here, displacement. Another word that it, when you see, you should immediately think scalar. Speed is a scalar. Velocity is a vector. Immediately, they start with the same letters. Let's go ahead and emphasize these are vectors. Force, also a vector quantity. Acceleration is a scalar. That is supposed to be the word acceleration. Squint, and you'll see it. And the vector analog of acceleration is called acceleration. So how do you know which one that you're talking about? If I talk about displacement, vector. Velocity, vector. Acceleration, eh. Typically in a textbook, acceleration, if they don't specify acceleration, assume the vector quantity. Uh, however, on a test or quiz, 
you know, it could vary. I might say, what's the magnitude of acceleration? But the way that you would differentiate is the vector symbol right there. So this would be A, and this would be A with a vector symbol over it. Now, there is a video that I do that this, some you'll eventually watch where I talk about other symbols that might be used, but this is what I mainly use. Velocity, V with a vector symbol. Speed, V. Distance, delta x, displacement, delta x vector. Force, And there's another uh, another vector quantity that we do need for chapters two and three, and that is position. There's not really a scalar analog to that. And the symbol used for position is x or y or z or r or s. Those are the most common ones that we use. Displacement is just going to be that the triangle delta in front of whatever you're using for position. Questions to hear? vector math, some more vector math besides the 1 plus 1 equals 0. Sorry, I'm sure. I leave home. And I walk 3 kilometers north. And then I walk Four kilometers east. What is my displacement? So when I ask what is my displacement, I'm asking what is the change in position? That's whenever you see the capital delta over there, it means change. So my change in x or position. So I'm asking what is my change in position? And I have done that on a test where I asked what is the displacement? And then the next question is what is the change in position? And it should have been the same answer, but not everyone saw it that way. So how do we express an answer? Well, there's two different forms, rectangular and polar. Rectangular form. My displacement equals, this is really easy with this one, three kilometers north, plus four kilometers east. Now, you might look at that and go, isn't that just the problem? That well, I put a plus instead of an and. But physicists and mathematicians uh, alike really don't like writing that much. That's just too much to write. So we got to come up with a shorthand. I really don't feel like writing out north and east. So I need to somehow indicate the direction without actually writing the word out. So we come up with a shorthand here. I'm just going to say that uh, that way, east, I'm just going to put a little I here with that the hat over it. If you're doing LibreOffice or OpenOffice, uh, hat is the key word for that. So it's called I hat, and that's what I'm labeling as east. And north. J hat. So now that I've defined it, 
I can write my answer as three kilometers J hat plus four kilometers I hat. The hat is an indication that you're dealing with a vector, but it's a special type of vector. It's known as a unit vector. So if I have any you know, R hat, this is telling us we're dealing with a unit vector. Since it is a vector, it has a magnitude and a direction. What is the magnitude of a unit vector? Again, I will emphasize that first word. What is the magnitude of a unit vector? Or we can be more succinct than that. One. One. Yeah. So the magnitude of a unit vector, the absolute value signs around it are indicating we're talking about magnitude. Magnitude of a unit vector is equal to one. There are no units associated with it. The direction. It depends, but if I'm dealing with I hat, J hat, and K hat, uh, the direction is what I say. Or, when you're working the problem, what you say. You define the direction and then you work, work with it. Try not to change it in the middle of the problem. R hat is called a radial unit vector. It is defined a little bit differently. We'll get to that when chapter six, I think it is. Questions here? Now traditionally, I had comes first. It doesn't have to. Commutative property does hold, so it doesn't, the order in which I do this is not crucial. So four kilometers I hat plus three kilometers J hat is probably the more traditional way of writing it. That's a three there. years ago I had about a week in which the board was actually higher and it wasn't letting down like this. But apparently not every teacher is my height so they will struggle. All right that's rectangular form it's just if you picture a, a graph you know if you plotted it out it's how far you go you go left or right how far you go up or down is traditional and how far you go forward or backwards or in out would be if we have the three-dimensional problem. Polar form. So if I plotted this out, I started here, I went four kilometers in the I-hat direction, and I go three kilometers in the up, My resultant, or the sum of vectors, is from where I began to where I ended. This is known as my resultant. It's just the vector sum. For whatever reason, when I signify resultant, I, I do a slightly different notation. Uh, I usually chalk all of the eccentricities to childhood scars. It's what I call the double print. Uh, so that's the symbol I'm using for resultant. I don't know why I don't use the vector symbol over top, but it's just, it's tradition at this point. And that is a sloppy for the first time I do this. It's slightly better. So how big is the resultant? There we go. That is a right angle, Pythagorean theorem holds. That's five kilometers. For those who have forgotten Pythagorean theorem, three squared plus four squared is equal to the resultant squared. And so the magnitude of my resultant, five. And don't forget units, it's not math class, it's physics class. Units matter. But since 
Vectors have a magnitude and a direction. We have the magnitude, but what is the direction? Now, some of you have had the math to do it. Some of you have not, or some of you had it, but are not confident with it. Oh, that's vague. Northeast is, gives you a, a general idea, but not, not sufficient. Luis, you look like you want to say. I don't know. Does it have to do with, like, the um, degrees? Of the... Yes. Okay. All right, so it's heading in the northeast direction. So we need to figure out what this angle is right here. Now, there are certain conventions that uh, you do need to define, like I hat, J hat. For a problem, you need to say what I hat direction is, J hat. Side note, once I hat and J hat are defined, K hat is automatically defined. We are also assuming that zero degrees is to the right. We're doing the, the typical math convention, Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, and back to 360 or zero. If I go the other direction, negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees, negative 360 degrees, or zero. So zero degrees is that way. You don't need to write it. It is, I am allowing that convention automatically. And then positive angles go around counterclockwise. So what I'm looking for is this angle right here. I use a typical symbol theta for the angle. Typically when you're dealing with angles or rotation or things like that, Greek letters are used. Not a 100% rule, but it, it is often. There are certain Greek letters, please avoid. Don't use pi as an angle. Although I have seen, man, that threw me. I had, was doing an astronomy course and or astrophysics course and pi kept showing up in the equation i was wondering where does this pi come from i'm not seeing it at all 